It's day two, no, three. Second day of interviews, it's, it's Sunday now. Yeah. This is uh, the Northwest Pinball Show. This is our kickoff inaugural uh, Pin DevCon experience. And uh, I'm so glad everybody came here to hang out. Uh, we've, been trying, we've been trying to get like just 10 minutes with everybody that brought a homebrew game. Because I think that like these are those moments that like we all work super hard to get to a show, bring our projects there. And let's talk about the projects you and I brought. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Did you bring 301? I don't even know. <laughs> so we're laughing because uh, I met Jack at the Northwest Pinball Show 45 years ago. One of the first new friends I made through pinball. And uh, since then, we both aspire to make games. But I think yeah. that a lot of the time we've spent have been involved with people making games, being supportive, encouraging, all that kind of stuff. It's yeah. I mean, I have been making my game for, what, eight years now, maybe? Tell about your game. Talk about what you're doing. Uh, I Wait, introduce yourself first. I said your name. My name's Jack. I'm making The Muppet Show. It's a really cool game, eventually. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, I've, I've gone through six Whitewoods, okay. four completed, like flipping versions of it. Well, like what I would consider completed except for ramps. Um, and I reject every single one that I've done. Uh, it's just been, it's, it's been a lot of work and yeah. I love it. It's great. Uh, I need to get back to it more. I adopted a couple kids and they're amazing, but uh, they do take up a bit of my time. So, so you just get them working on the game with you, yeah. like small hands. It's a really productive, you know. Levi, that's you're gonna have to learn how to solder. <laughs> there you go. Learn new tools. It's it's good stuff. Um, so yeah. do you, do you aspire to like okay, give yourself a timeline, a goal, a deadline, or is this just what you fill your time with and enjoy it, no pressure? Yeah. What is your I don't, approach? I don't feel any pressure to finish my game. Right. I will finish my game. Right. And in fact. As everyone who builds a pinball machine, I know what the next game that I will work on is, but that's, you know. Do you want to share what the next game would be? No, not okay. yet. I mean, I, that would be putting the cart before the horse. You, I don't want to I've made the mistake of talking about games I'm working on, projects I'm working on, and it just makes that, that goal line um, seem further and further away. How, how is Snoopy? <laughs> Wait, uh, the Peanuts game. Oh, Peanuts. Yeah, you know, I was working on that with one of the artists that I used to work with, and then... He's no longer with us, so that project kind of is sitting aside right yeah, now. So, I hear you. but it's sitting on the shelf above me in my garage. So every time I walk out there, there's this beautiful artwork, hand-drawn peanuts cabinet up there. Going, I just need to finish this. That's wonderful. And it would be nice. And I think that you know, I've, I've talked to others who have been much more passionate about the property of peanuts as a pinball machine than I am. And I think that that might be the right fit is you to find someone who says like, take this, run with it. There's some ideas we thought would be cool. I mean, just uh, we had, and a lot of people contributed to that project too. It's just like, I mean, Mike O'Rourke had done the 3D models I talked about. Um, he even made a video mode, and the video mode was basically the football kick, you know, and it was, I think it was set up to be like 99% fail. You know, <laughs> you're never going to make it, but once in a while you might actually get it. And if you did, like, a special experience. But I think that, like, like a lot of these things, these projects that we're doing, um, you know, getting together at these pinball shows is a chance to kind of, meet crazy people like us that want to build and make things and stuff. And so I think that's one of the things that like is really great about getting together at events like this is because yeah. again, like we've got um, a lot of homebrew games here. So yeah. you're here hanging out with the family. Have you played the homebrew games? I played all the, the ones that are here now. Yeah. So do you feel any more inspired to like get yours done? Well, it's not a function of getting it done. I will finish it. Sure. I know that. Right. But, What's important for me in playing a game is different than what's important for other people. Like, so talk I, about that. Like, what, what, I, what is it that you feel is a great game? I mean, you make games. That's what I do. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a video game developer. Okay. So, I mean, that's my day job is right. that I write software for games all day long. Not a bad thing. Love my job. Love the people that I work with. Right. The, what, what inspires me about uh, making pinball is what's different than my day job okay. really um i love making i love putting leds in my game sure so my first whitewoods had uh inserts drilled okay. out and i had light shows in fact that's the only way the mode that i had the only way you knew what you were doing was the lights lit up okay. and you had to knock down the targets that were lit and then you could lock a ball then you got a multi-ball eventually um, it was not very fun, but it was at least a learning experience. It gives you something to start stringing together. Like here's lights, you know how yeah. light works. You can put some color on it, string together and show progress. And, and in my eventual, uh, I, I took that learning and in my eventual 
end mode, mm -hmm. uh, you will it'll be the uh, Fozzy uh, thing. He's up on the stage and he's telling jokes, and you have to throw fruit at him. And so once you do that, once you get all the fruit, you get to the end of the Fozzy mode. Okay, so Fozzy. So from a game creation experience, it sounds to me like you're more of like here's something I'd love to see happen, and then figure out a way to convey that on the play field. No, somewhat. Um, that is that is a lot of what I've done. And then the reason that I've rejected my play fields is they just don't feel right. Okay. I'm not that good at doing layout. Okay. Uh, and I know that, but I'm, I, I chose to do a wide body game because okay. I wanted more room. Right. And I wasted a whole bunch of space on the left side. And I'm like, wow, that wasn't a very good idea. And so I've, I still actually, that's still in my plan is to waste a whole bunch of stuff on the left side. Right. And then I don't have enough room for all the stuff I want to have okay. at the area that I do. So I, I need to get that. I need to figure that out. I went out and I bought a CNC. A, New tools. Get it, set you up, know, right. it's, it's great. And, and now I have my own CNC and I can create a, a play field, a new play field anytime I want. The only real cost is the inserts that you have to there put you in. Go. But it's it's really nice to be afforded that ability. So like I've I've been asking everybody like what is the part that they dread the most? They like the least of the process. And you were just saying like the layout part. Is that really the the blocker for you or like what what is the part you wouldn't wish to hand off to anybody at any time? Finishing. <laughs> the um, one that makes the project done. Yeah, like, sweet. That That's part. Fun. Yeah, no. I, I sympathize with that. I love to come up with wacky ideas and then see them achieved by all the great people around me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's, I don't, I, I honestly think it's a geometry that is the hardest part okay. for me. Um, just getting something that feels right. right. Um, in my two, two play fields ago, I stole the loops from um, Attack from Mars. We like to say ins you were inspired yeah. by. Well, I, I took a, a I took a uh, image of the play field yep. and I put it into my CAD yeah, and the I tested geometry traced it out. Yeah. Right. And uh, and I was like, wow, this doesn't feel like it at all. It, right. it feels terrible. And I felt it was a pretty bad, you so know. maybe that one piece on its own without everything else around it didn't have the same it effect. It did not at all. And I need, I need to figure out how to do that better. But so you know, is there a game out? So is there a game that exists out there that if you, it was, if it was your design, you would be satisfied with like, like what would be the game that exists that is, that feels like the game you want to make? Ooh, that's a really good question. No, I just made that up right now. That's really that's that's nice. <laughs> um, I don't I don't have an answer because it's such a good question. Uh, there are, I mean, I love a lot of games. Right. Um, I want I for me the most important thing is a mode based game. Okay. Um, and my favorite game is Twilight Zone. Okay. Love it. I uh, would love to have one. If anybody has a really cheap one out there, let me know. Um, <laughs> but uh, the thing I the thing I really really just just want to do is build a whole bunch of modes have you know i'm not answering your question but... that's fine i mean we're, we're just talking here yeah right. so i mean i think that one thing people you know there's different opinions on where to start with a game it's like you know especially when you're homebrew the idea of like borrowing from licenses that exist out there properties like the muppets and stuff like that what's really interesting about the muppets is like a literal cast of crazy characters to yes. pick and choose from so i mean it's almost like they build their own modes around that stuff yeah. so when you're looking at modes do you see them kind of character based? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so you're talking about Fozzie Bear getting tell right? jokes, getting stuff thrown yeah. at him. Like, what are some of the other concepts that you want to see? Oh, to um, well, the the original thing that I'm not going to do is I wanted to have a Gonzo ramp uh, for the Gonzo mode and have like a figure eight loop that okay. you could do, but it I, takes up some space. It takes up yeah. too much space. I won't have that, uh, and I'm not going to have an upper play field. So, so you're gonna have uh, you're, and I'm gonna butcher the names, but the two old dudes talking crap all the Stop time. The okay, so they're gonna be like in the back box, looking down at you, or like where are you thinking they're gonna they, land? They will be on the right side, uh, just below, just inside the play field. And what I want to do is I want I have a few figures of them that yeah. I want to get scanned. Okay, and I'm talking to the guys over there. Yeah, they got some great scanners. Yeah. And uh, once I get that done, I'm actually going to articulate their mouths so that you can actually see them. And I have friends who are actors who will do the voice acting. And That'll be great. It will be cool. Dude, it's been 10 minutes already. Yeah, I know. We blew right through this. I'm so glad you're here. Jack Bridges, working on a Muppets game. We're at Pin DevCon. We're having a good time at the Northwest Pinball Show. We want to thank again, like Planetary Pinball and Coin Taker for uh, sponsoring our get together last night. We got five games together at the hotel across the street here, we were down the hall, and it was just great to get everyone together, talking home brews and spending some time together. So thanks a lot.